I'll start one by giving credit. You know, obviously to Illinois, they played hard as I expected that they would. Um, but as I sit here or stand here before you, the more I play this thing back in my head, even now, um, what happened today had very few things to do with Illinois. It goes back to what I always say: it's going to be us versus us. Us and uh, we didn't play very well in any of the three phases, offensively. Uh, you know, to not score there before the half, uh, to be inefficient on third down, um, not going with touchdowns when we got into the red area. Defensively, gave up too many explosive plays there um, at the end. Uh, and then special teams, you know, kept providing momentum uh, for the other team with the returns that we had. So um, our standard doesn't change when we win or when we lose. It stays and remains the same. And, you know, obviously we got a bye week uh, looking at us this week get some guys healthy back back out there, guys that we need. We're also taking a look at all the things we do offensively, defensively, special teams, quality control it, uh, and get this thing back on track and back in rhythm. You know, this thing starts and ends with me as the leader. I've got to have our team prepared to, to go play. Uh, we, we don't make excuses. Uh, we did not play to our standard, and it's frustrating to watch because I still have a lot of faith and belief in this team. As I just told them, you know, the adversity that we find ourselves in today, uh, we put ourselves there. So the only people that can get us out of it is us. And we'll use this next week uh, to just evaluate every part of our program like we would always do um, during a bye week. And then obviously, like I said, get some guys healthy um, in turn to get us ready to uh, go to Chicago and play Northwestern in a couple of weeks. Um, I still got a lot of faith in this team. Still a lot of football left to be played. All of our goals are still to help us. But we've made it a little more difficult for ourselves and we've got to do the work that's necessary to get us going back in the right direction. Um, so with that, I'll bring up the questions. Hey, uh, what went into the decision to run the ball on third and six on that last offensive drive? You know, anytime we make calls like that, it's easy for uh, us to second guess them. Um, it's obviously something that we prepare for. We have runs in third and medium based on the front and based on the defense that we expect to get. Uh, again, you know, I'd like to see us find ways to be more efficient on third and medium, whether it's run or throw. And when you go back and evaluate whether, you know, the run was effective or not, a lot of the times we had some breakdowns there. We got to take a look and see what happened. I, I can't tell you exactly what happened other than we didn't block it very well and we, we didn't make a, make a play on third and medium, which we have to be able to do and we've been really good at. Was there any consideration of throwing the ball there? It's always consideration. Like I said, when we go to third and medium, we have calls on both sides of the thing. Third medium runs, third medium pass. We made the decision to run, and uh, it, it didn't work. So that goes back to, to myself as the leader. Um, you know, I got to give us a better play or we'll put us in a better position in that situation. What was your thought process kind of just you know settling for three, trying Never. to get a defensive stop and then going over time? Uh, we, we, we stay aggressive. Uh, for us to make that call was because we obviously expected a look and we didn't get the look maybe, and we didn't, we didn't, weren't efficient. We didn't block it the way it probably should be blocked. And you know, I hate commenting on it because I don't know and didn't see the play per se to see where it was a breakdown. But I can tell you, every play is designed to work. And, and we got a blocker for everybody typically. And obviously somewhere down the line, we didn't make a block, but we missed the read and uh, we gotta get that corrected. The team talked about this week, obviously this week not going to the Ohio State loss to Inger. You fell behind early again today. Is there any part of that that's a, that you think may have played into this, this week? I hope not because our standard is we play the next play, we play the next game. And, and to me, that's you know that's all we talked about this week. Um, we knew it would be a tough-ass game. I mean, this is a, they're playing Big Ten football in Illinois, too. Um, but again, I'm disappointed in the things we didn't do. Not as much as what Illinois did, but the things we didn't do. You know, to, to turn it over there before the half and you have a chance to go up 21 to whatever, seven. You know, we always fight to get what we call that two score swing between the halves. That's one of the reasons why we tried the surprise on side there to steal that possession back. Obviously didn't get it executed, uh, was there, didn't get it executed, and then we gave up a touchdown which then allowed them to have the two score swing that we try to fight for uh, in what we call the middle eight. George. Hey Mike. George. Um, end of the first half, early third quarter, a couple of you know personal foul penalties that's been uncharacteristic this season. Is that just guys pressing too much to try to make an impact? No, those were competitive penalties. I mean, you know, the face mask on the, the quarterback sack, but and then, you know, they call hands to the face on one of those third down deals. 
you know, the way we saw it on tape, it looked like the hands were up here in the top of the shoulder pad. They obviously thought it was hands to the face. I have a hard time being disappointed other than we got to play smarter and cleaner, but in these competitive type penalties like that, I mean, it just happened at some inopportune times when we couldn't afford it to happen, especially coming off the turnover we had on offense. We needed to get out of that half without giving up a score. Mike, um, right before halftime, um, their kick team lined up, looked like they're going to go for a field goal. You called the timeout, and then they brought out the offense, I believe, on fourth down. Was the idea behind the timeout preparing for a possible trick play on, on the kick team, or what was the thinking behind the timeout? That timeout was to remind our, our field goal block team that they have the ability to draw you off sides, and which then would give them a first down. And so we had three timeouts. We used one to bring our guys over to gather them, make sure they understood, hey, just because they're lined up for a field goal doesn't mean they can't give a false cadence or a hard snap count to draw us off, which then would give them an automatic first down. So it's to give us, get us clean on what to expect. A lot of people don't practice those things. We do, but it was a reminder to know that, hey, there's a chance for the hard cadence, be on side, see the ball snap, and also to try to freeze the kicker a little bit. What's up, bro? Going back to the uh, end of the game with the third down and fourth, was there any consideration about going for it on that fourth and six? No, we were in our kick line. We knew we needed a touchdown to win, a field goal to tie. I would have loved to get the third and six executed to keep the drive alive, but once we didn't get the positive yardage, I got faith in our kicker. He missed one earlier that, you know, just is uncharacteristic right now. He's been a little inconsistent, but we did know that we needed at least a field goal to tie it. Figured our defense had been playing well the last three drives that worst case scenarios, we hold them and maybe get one more crack to go down, which is why we tried to use some of those timeouts. Um, unfortunately, they hit the big play down the sideline, gave them an opportunity to get themselves in field goal range, and goes back to, like I said, it wasn't much as what they did as much as what we did not do. That play down the sideline that you talked about, there were a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles in the corner that seemed like they went in Illinois' way. What do you see from the court goal? I mean, you know, again, I hate commenting on play before I have a chance to really evaluate it. Obviously, I saw a couple of, we had some PIs down the field earlier where I felt like we panicked with the ball in the air. I saw a few plays where we made the break up in the end zone. So you can you gotta take the good with the bad. Obviously, I don't like seeing the ball being caught down the field in that situation because we want to hold them out of the field goal range. And we didn't make a play when the play was there for us to make. And I know last year there were a couple of times where Wisconsin Penn State game where you weren't happy with how your team performed the weather. A little bit of conditions today. How do you feel to win play? Well, we'll weather played no factor in the day. Coach, uh, not looking for excuses, but the injuries in defensive backfield and then on the offensive line, uh, how do you evaluate what you had to do with a shortened bench, not enough players to rotate through there, as usual? You, you, you know me long enough. You guys know long enough. I, I don't care about injuries. Injuries are going to be part of the game. It's the reason why when you, we come in here and you guys ask about all these guys are playing, that's why we play a lot of players. We play a physical sport called football, and injuries are a part of the game. And what we have to do, and we've recruited, and the guys that go in, as I said, our standard doesn't change between the first team player, second team player, third team player. We've had to create enough depth, which I feel like we have, but now we've got to get these guys to execute and, and, and play like they're capable of. Again, it goes back to us. We didn't play our best, and that's the frustrating part for me as a coach. It's my job to get us to play our best. It's my job to get us coaching our best, and, and the day didn't happen. Okay, Coach, it's good to go have the bye week now. And, you know, after you guys have been going since August, you know, now you get to take a little breather and figure out what needs to be. Yeah, yeah, tweak a little bit. You know, the schedule is the schedule. I mean, I like to have one every four weeks in the perfect world to give us a chance to stay healthy. I mean, we're still a developmental program. Uh, we played a lot of young guys out there today that hopefully this experience uh, will be one that we can put in our toolbox. And as I said, it's about getting back in rhythm and, and cre getting back to the momentum and to the standard of what we've got to do, which is Every Saturday is to go out and play our best. And, and I mean, my goal is to get us playing our best. Today, we did not play our best. And it starts with me as the leader to make sure that uh, I put us in the best possible position to do just that. Thank you, Thanks, guys.